Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a, you know what, when, when you think of teaching on manhood, you think it's going to be easy, but this teaching, I think this teaching was the most challenging teaching I've actually ever had to do. Praise God. Wow. And I've never done a teaching on this topic, and the topic is the calling of manhood. Mm. You know, the calling of manhood. There's a calling to being a man, yeah. you know? Um, and, you know, this lesson is to, this lesson has helped me, you know, to know the calling and what God expects of us as men because we need to fulfill this calling as men in our life. And there's an attack, if you haven't noticed, there's an attack on manhood mm -hmm. in America. That's right. There's an attack on manhood, and, and um, we've been raised in a feminine society. You know, we've been raised to, uh, to be passive. You know, we've been raised to, to not um, be a manly man. You know, you're persecuted if you're a manly man. Do you notice that? Yeah, you're no. persecuted for being a man nowadays. Uh, but that shouldn't stop us, just like being a, you know, being a Christian we can't stop because we're being persecuted for being Christians. We can't stop also for being a Christian man. So, uh, you know, so this isn't an attack on the real church. This is an attack on the fake church. And even, uh, and, and I believe the Lord was just helping us shine light on why we are in a feminine society. You know, when the church was, is ordered and commanded by God to be run by men. You know, so why is it run by women? You know, <laughs> because that's not biblical. That's not the church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> women have their role to play, and every woman of God will will let you know that the problem with the American church is a lack of men. Amen. Yes. You know, when there's a real man in the church, sadly, we kick him out of the church, don't we? Right. Mm -hmm. When the, when there's a man of God in the church and he's speaking up for evangelism or or speaking up for righteousness or questioning something that's wrong in the church, what's the response a lot of times? It's, get out of here, right? So that's not the design in the Bible. That We were just saying that we're supposed to submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. And the other side of this teaching is um, all types of manhood, but also the brotherhood. <clears throat> See, I was starting to talk about it last night. This teaching is going to talk about the brotherhood uh, that God, that the church is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what God's bring, trying to bring us back to, as the first church was. Mm -hmm. The first church was a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. See, the disciples were a brotherhood. Jesus was close. He picked the twelve, right? And after oh, Jesus yeah. ascended, what happened? The disciples were living. Not necessarily living under the same roof, but they were living together. They they loved being with each other. Yes. They loved each other. They they uh, preferred one another before themselves. Amen. So uh, so we're going to get into this, and and I believe this is a special special teaching. I've spent about thirty hours on this teaching. Amen. Like wow. I, uh, if I had to guess, how long? So uh, the Lord took me and taught me a ton. Uh, a lot more than what I can teach in this amount of time. But I'm super excited about it. I know it's the word of the Lord. Yeah, you know? thank you, Lord. And, and we're going to ask yeah. that He uh, teach us this morning. Amen. 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 So let's pray. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for your spirit, Amen. Lord. And I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Lord, that you would reveal our purpose as sons and as men of God. And I pray that you would reveal this calling to manhood, Lord, that this teaching would be a life-changing teaching, and that you'd help us to be better men of God. And I thank you for these mighty men of God in this room. And I pray that you would teach me, even as I teach, Lord, you would even download new, new revelation and new information, that you would use this vessel, Lord, for your glory. And the, and the church said, Amen. Amen. So the calling to manhood. All right, when you think, on your packet there, when you think of a Christian man, what do you think of? Just overall. 
in society. Sadly, most people in society think of weak, two-faced hypocrites. That's what they think of Christians. Christian men. Nowadays, too many men lose their manhood when they become Christians. For example, in the world they would fight for what they believed in. But now that they are saved, they turn into politically correct wussies. Hmm. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 amen? amen. In today's society, it is very rare to see a man doing his job leading and teaching his family. It's very rare to see a man leading and teaching his family nowadays. Amen. Being an example. But many reasons... Uh, for, for many reasons, you almost always see the woman running the family. Also, for the most part, today's teaching from the church pulpit is catered to women and children. So at, at most churches, the, the teaching and the preaching from the pulpit is catered towards women and children, not towards men. No wonder why men think church is for girls and weak people. Because there is no place for manly men in the church. The true men that stand for truth are a threat and are run out of the church as troublemakers and heretics. Mm -hmm. The only way to be a man in most churches today is to be a passive, to be passive and never judge anything, no matter how ridiculous it is. And that is not being a man at all. Amen. We have been conditioned to be quiet cowards that never make any waves. Right. And to add to the problem, most of these pastors look like homos. That's right. <laughs> with their tight yeah. jeans and effeminate clothes. Right. And the people would, wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. The people are attracted to this type of leader, mm -hmm. a feminine homo looking dude. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. They wouldn't have it any other way. Listen to Isaiah 3, 12 through 13. It says this. It says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. So God says, Oh, he said, children, he said, as for my people. See, this isn't what God wants. But he's saying, hey, my people, they're supposed to be my people. Mm -hmm. He said, children are their oppressors. And he said, women rule over them. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's not what God designed, how God designed it to be, is it? So what is the solution? God is the solution. And men of God and the Word of God. That's the solution. Amen. God men of God, and the Word of God. When men step up and be the men of God they are called to be, you see God step up and fight for the people. Yes. But when men are passive and don't do their job, everybody suffers from the men down. So women pick up the cost and children pick up the cost too. Not only men. Amen? Amen. And every woman of God will tell you that what our society is lacking is real men of God. Ever see, women of God aren't feminists. Mm -hmm. Women of God want men to be men yeah. yes. because it creates security and it creates a safe place for them. Right. Amen? Amen? Amen. When we're passive and we're just watching football and drinking beer and not leading and teaching the family, that's, that's what creates an unsafe environment, huh? There's no watchman on the wall. So, we will be those men that lead the people in righteousness. Amen. Amen. God has called us. Amen? Amen. You see, God hates effeminate men enough to send them to hell forever if they don't repent. Can I say that again? You see, God hates effeminate men enough to send them to hell forever if they don't repent. Is that what the Bible says? Yes. That's the King James Version. Effeminate, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Effeminate will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So God hates it, right? And the God, God hates all workers of iniquity. This might be popular in the world to be effeminate, but God hates it. Yes. Because it's going against His design. So, um, 
he sends them to hell because they are rebelling against who he created them to be. God created a man to be masculine and a, an example, a leader, a protector, a lover, a teacher, a provider, a helper, a friend, and an encourager. Isn't that good? I want a dad, I want a dad like that. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Give me a dad like that. That's how I like our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. That's it. But as boys, most of us saw and learned bad examples of what a man should be. Yes. Such as, in order to be a man, you had to fornicate with a lot of women. Right. Or get drunk. Or drive fast cars. Mm -hmm. Or love sports. Or make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Etc. Right. This is what was put into our minds, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. on, on what a man is. I know, I'm speaking for myself, that's what I was taught. Yeah. But now that I have the knowledge of God, when I think of a manly man, I think about Christ Amen. and the apostles and prophets and men that served the Lord with all their hearts. That's not a feminine thing. When I think of a man, I think of Christ. Amen. He was the man of man. Man of men. He was the most manliest man out there. He was not some feminine a uh, hippie. That's right. That's, right. Yeah. Well, that's an abomination. Amen. He was a man. He he. The Bible says that he he came um, and he opened not his mouth when he went to the cross. He didn't whine and complain. He wasn't he wasn't making a big scene. He took his he took the crucifixion like a champ. Amen. 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 He's a soldier. He's the commander of the Lord's army. Amen. He's the most manliest man you'll ever see. Yes. Yeah. He's coming back to make Hallelujah. war and judge. That's right. He's not a passive Hallelujah. pushover. Amen? Amen. He's not a passive pushover. Not at all. So, today we're going to look at manhood from the Bible. And what better place to start than with the first man, Adam? So we're going to look at manhood from the Bible, and what better place to start than the first man God created, which was Adam. So, God creates Adam and gives him dominion. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God gave dominion to rule over creation, to glorify God, and to fulfill the will of God. So why did God give dominion over the, all the earth, like the scripture says? God gave dominion to rule over creation. To glorify God and fulfill the will of God. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have in Christ, that's why God gives us dominion mm -hmm. as men of God over creation, over, over the earth, over all the earth. Mm -hmm. If we're in Christ, and that's under Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's if we're submitted to Christ. Mm -hmm. right. We're in His order. And now the world, as we're going to look, the world is being subdued under our feet, the Bible mm -hmm. teaches. Um, because all things are being subdued under Christ's feet, Amen. and we're part of that. Uh, we're part of that cultivation. Amen. We're part of that job that, that that's being done. Amen. We have a part to play. We have a purpose Amen. in creation. So God created a woman to help. Now we're going to briefly touch on on uh, the woman's role. But we're mainly, mainly going to be focusing on Adam. God created a woman to help Adam fulfill the will of God. That's why God created a woman, to be a helpmate. Genesis 2, 15 through 25. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of the tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, 
But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. For, but for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of, one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh inside thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto Adam. And Adam said, This now is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his mother and father, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they both were naked, they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And then I wrote, Notice God gave the commandments to the man, Adam, and expected him to lead and, and teach Eve. So that is why... So, so that is why when they sinned, he came and addressed the leader, which was Adam. You notice that they say that, that the man sinned. Uh, they always say that Adam sinned first. Mm -hmm. They don't say that Eve sinned first, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what was, um, why, why do they say that sin came through Adam and not Eve, if Eve's the one that bit the apple first? It's because the man was the head. That's it. The man was the one in who God gave the commandment to. So, so when God knew what happened, God's every Bible says He, uh, there's nothing hidden from His eyes. He sees everything. So He knew that Eve had eaten the apple first. But what did He do? He went to Adam first, and He said, "Adam, where are you? What have you done?" Amen. So He was confronting Adam, the head first even though Eve is the one that sinned first, because he gave the commandment to Adam. And as men, we are the ones God's given the, the commandment to. We're the, one, we're the ones that are primarily responsible for our families. On Amen. Judgment Day, we're going to be judged stricter than the women, because they're under That's our it. authority. Whether we exercise that authority or not, they are under our authority as men. As the heads. Amen? Amen. 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 So you see, Adam originally taught her not to even touch the tree, but when the snake came into the garden, Adam was passive and threw her threw her under the bus by allowing her to eat the fruit. <clears throat> he failed by not saying anything. Okay. So how do we know that Adam is the one that taught Eve? Because the original commandment was, is what we just read. You can't eat from any tree in the garden, right? But when the snake came to Eve and said, "Can you not drink of eat of any tree in the garden?" Mm. Uh, he said, "She said, um, we can eat of every tree in the garden except we can't touch that tree." So when Adam gave the commandment, he didn't give the same commandment. He said, "Don't even touch it." God said, "Don't eat of it." See? And that's how we are as men. We, we need to put buffer zones around the sin and say, don't even touch it. Don't, don't even, that's why some of our, our rules as men can even be stricter than the original commandments of God in our families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Because we're the ones in charge. You know? Uh, so right. that's what I was saying. He, he told her, pass the commandment of the Lord. He said, don't even touch it. Don't even come near it. And he had that authority because he was put in charge. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 So, but what, he sat there and watched, he sat there and watched. He, the Bible didn't say he was off uh, getting fruit for the family. He was right there, standing next, next to Eve as that devil came in and tempted her. And he said nothing. See, he was already practicing this 
wicked passive man syndrome. Amen? He should have said, Devil, you ain't allowed in this house. You ain't allowed to talk to my wife. Uh, the Lord said we ain't supposed to touch nothing. I bind you and I cast you away in yeah. Jesus' name. And, and, and Eve, don't talk to that wicked snake. That's what should have happened. That's, that's what a man of God would have did. Amen? Amen? But because he was passive and he wanted to see if she would really die, and he wanted to see what would happen. You know, he didn't love his wife. So it's not loving not to lead your wife. Yes. It's not loving to not teach your wife. You know, um, God, if, if you're leading your, your family properly, God will always give you the ability to lead and to... Uh, to be an example and to teach. And that's why we cannot be hypocrites as Amen. men. Because nobody follows a hypocrite. That's right. Um, they need to see that you are practicing what you preach and preaching what you practice. Mm -hmm. They need to see that you're the real deal. That you genuinely love them. Because if you're a hypocrite, nine times out of ten, they're going to be hypocrites. Because mm -hmm. they're following your leadership. Monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's mm -hmm. what people do. They don't do... You, you can't say, do as I say, but don't do as I do. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work, does it? Mm -hmm. People never Amen. do that. Amen. They always do what you do. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, he failed by not saying anything. This is the same thing that sinful men do today, in and outside the church. They know their woman is in sin, or go about into sin... But because of a lack of love and courage, he allows her to go on in their evil way with the world. And then he has the nerve to call it love. But in reality, passiveness is not love at all. It is hateful and selfish. Amen. You know, notice that passive men, they say that I'm loving my wife by not, by not rebuking her and not correcting her. It's just like the world, right? They say that we're... That we're being hateful, right? Because we're yeah. correcting them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, a sinful man will say, well, I'm loving her by not correcting her. I'm loving her by being passive. I know it doesn't make sense right now. Right. But we see it all the time, right? right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Right. Passive men always act like by not uh, calling them out on their yoga pants that they're somehow being loving. Mm -hmm. Or not calling them out for doing yoga. Right. That they're somehow being loving. You see, and that's where the devil has deceived American men. Oh yeah. Passivity is not love. Passivity is hate. That's right. Yep. Because they're going to hell for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and God puts you in charge to lead and teach and confront. He made the Bible says he made the the woman a weaker vessel. Why did he do that? So that she would be dependent on you as the man. Mm -hmm. She's dependent on you financially. She's dependent on you as the stronger vessel. And that's why we're built stronger physically, as a representation of a stronger, stronger spiritual leader, too. Amen. Amen. And God made it that way because of His order yes. in the family. You guys staying with me? Yes. So, men know it is evil and bad, but they still say nothing. And that is wicked. And they are guilty of the sin of omission. The sin of omission. The Bible says anything, uh, if you know to do good and don't do it, to him it is sin. Right. So America, American men for the most part, are guilty of the sin of omission. Because they know to do good. They know that these things are evil. They know that these things are wrong. They know... God reveals things to the man first most of the time, mm -hmm. but he ignores it and suppresses the truth and unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Why does God do that? God gives us that, that uh, it's like, it's, we have like, we, we operate from more of a logical mind, mm -hmm. less emotion, right? And God created that because women are meant to nurture and, and take care of the family, the, the children and the husband. In, in a separate, in a different way than he made the man. The man was made to be less feelings, 
less emotion and, and think more logically so that he can not be affected by the feelings and the emotions mm -hmm. and, he, and he can lead his family off truth and off righteousness. Amen. That's it. See? But he made the woman separate and the, and the man and the woman uh, complement each other. So it's, it's good the way that God made man and woman. But the man is, is, uh, has changed to be like the woman. Where he's, he's more worried about feelings than truth. He's more worried about uh, you know, making everybody happy than truth. And that's why women aren't allowed to, to lead. is because the Bible says they're more easily, it teaches that they're more easily deceived. Yes. In First Timothy chapter two, you know, it says, "I do not allow a woman to teach or usurp authority over a man." He said, "Because he, he said because Adam was not deceived first, but the woman being deceived ate the fruit." Amen. Amen. So he's saying he gave the reason why women are not um, why women are not allowed to teach or usurp authority over man it had nothing to do with culture. God's culture don't change. Amen. Yep. Man's culture can change all at once, but God's ways and God's word will never change. His order for the family will never change. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's not doing a new thing in that way. Amen? Amen. Because he knew what he was doing the first time. Mm -hmm. So God makes a man and a wife one so they can have godly seed. This is the next section here. Um, this is why God makes a man and a woman one so they could have godly seed. Malachi 2.15 And did not he make one? Yet he had yet had he the residue of the Spirit? And wherefore one? Why one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. So God's one of God's purposes... Uh, and, and God's purpose for making man and, and wife one is to have godly children. And that's why the devil is on a full-out rampage to defile the children. Yes. And it's working. It's working. He's super successful. He's like over 99% successful, I believe, in the American church right. for screwing up kids, Christian kids. Right. If you go into the colleges, I think it's like 80% of college kids uh, say that they fall, fall away from the faith when they go to college. Mm. Why is that? Because they were fake Christians in the first place. Right. So, the man and the woman have to be one. Uh, the only way they can truly be one in the spirit and in the flesh is for both people to be submitted to the word of God. Do you know how a man and a wife are one? They're both submitted to the Word of God. If the man and the woman... You can't force a woman to obey you. You can't force a woman. She's got to be a woman of God herself. And she has to be willingly submitted because she knows her role. She knows her role. She knows her place in the Bible. Mm -hmm. See? And that's, that's not sexist to a woman of God. Mm -hmm. That's not insulting to a woman of God. That's an honor. Because yes. now she has a place at the table. Right. She Now she knows where she belongs. And now God can give peace and blessing over that house. Because everything is in order. Amen. So, they are... The man and the woman are, are one. They're, un, they're a united front. One mind. One mission. One cause of Christ. This is what they are. A man and a wife of God. Are one mind, one mission, one cause of Christ. They are best friends and partners to do the will of God. This is what it's about. Me and my wife, we're best friends. We don't compete with each other. That's what worldly people do. We love each other. We're happy with the positions God's given us. She don't want my position. My position's hard. Amen. If you're doing it the right, the right thing, Amen. you're responsible. The weight's on you. That's right. Off with your head if you fail. Mm -hmm. right. 
So they're best friends. The man and the wife are best friends and partners to do the will of God. Thank you, Jesus. They love each other and love the role that God has given them in order to love and take care of each other. See, my, my wife is happy to submit to me because I really love her. Yes. She trusts me with her life. And we've built that trust. You know, I had to prove myself, and I still prove myself, that I'm faithful and that I will never betray her. And, and that's what it's about, you see. And she would, she would uh, do anything that I say because she trusts me. And even when she hasn't understood or, or agreed with me, after we talk it out, if I'm still saying, no, this is the way we're going, she says, okay. And she takes it back to the Lord in prayer. Sometimes the Lord has corrected me. Amen. Sometimes the Lord corrects her. But I had the final say where the direction of this family is going. Amen. The only time the woman has a reason not to follow the man is if he's leading them into sin. Mm. If he's saying, let's watch this movie that blasphemes God's name. Mm. Or let's drink. Or let's whatever it is. That's the only time the woman can say, no, I'm not going to submit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if your husband's not saved, he's still your head. You still have to submit to him. And the Bible says you can win him without a word. Mm -hmm. You can win him by your chaste conduct. You can yeah. win him by your character. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. What a blessing. Yeah. That's when you know you're a woman of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So on the next page it says, God is looking for men that will be good fathers and husbands. That's what he's looking for. He's looking to see, okay, can I, can I trust my boy over here? Can I trust him with my princess over here? Mm -hmm. See? He's judging your character now yes. to see if you're ready for marriage. Because if you're in the Spirit and you're seeking Him with all, all of your heart, you don't have to worry about chasing down women. Mm -hmm. At the right time, God's going to bring that to you mm -hmm. if that's what you want. Even though Paul said it's better not to even marry. Because mm -hmm. you can be fully focused on the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can be fully um, you know, producing fruit like crazy until Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. and, and building up the church. you know. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so God's looking for men that will be good fathers and husbands. I believe good fathers prepare their hearts to be good fathers well before they ever become fathers. And even if you will never be a biological father, you need to have the heart of a father in order to love people the way the Heavenly Father loves them. Amen. Amen. You need to have the, a heart of a father even if you're not a biological father. Say you can't have kids. You can still have the heart of a father. Mm -hmm. and, per, and you can still love your people and, mm -hmm. you know, do the, have that father's heart. Mm -hmm. So I believe this is one of the attributes that God saw in Abraham that caused God to choose him. He was looking for a father of many nations. So what was it about Abraham? What was it about Abraham? Well, let's look at Genesis 18, 19 on your packet here. It says this. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. It says this. This is God speaking. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Amen. I want to read that again. Amen. Amen. I want God to say this about you, man of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Listen to what God says. What an honor that God would say this about somebody. Amen. This is why God chose Abraham to be the father of faith. Amen. It says, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So I believe this is exactly 
why God chose Abraham. Because he knew that he would command his people in the way of the Lord. He's seen that he was a loyal. He's seen that he was loyal and that he would put his family's needs above his own. See that? Mm -hmm. And through this same obedience, he became the father of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. See? This is the heart of a father. See, he gave up his life. The Bible says we've got to lay down our life for our wife and for our children. It's no longer, I don't live for myself anymore. As a single man, you live for yourself. Even, you know, because, but if you want to get married, you lay down everything. Now all your money is for the family. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, the church and the family, amen? Mm -hmm. Every paying mm -hmm. God what you need to pay Him, mm -hmm. amen? But my whole life is submitted to them. My if my one of my kids, I I have four kids. We're about to have our fifth kid. If uh, if my kid change, if my kid gets a poopy diaper, I have to change it. <laughs> I don't have a choice, even if I'm in a bad mood, which I'm not in a bad mood, because I got Jesus. I'm on my way to heaven. What's so bad? Amen. This is over. So. Uh, but the point is, is that I have laid down my life to serve. Amen. I'm a servant of the church. Yeah. I, I'm dead to myself. I'm dead to this life. I'm simply a vessel for God to see the will of God done, not only in my life, but in my wife and children's life, and in my church's life, Amen. In my brother's life. Yes, Amen. thank you, Lord. Because I love them. Amen. So if, if you love them... You'll be the best example of Christ that you can be by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Yes. I know that I need God in order to do this. I know. But I remember before I became a father, I was pregnant. I, right when I married my wife, we got pregnant the first month that we got married. It was a blessing of the Lord. Amen. But I still chewed tobacco. I wasn't sanctified. Mm -hmm. See, I was coming out of the false American church. But God was showing me, I was looking at my, my wife's beautiful baby in her belly, and God was speaking to me. He was saying, are, are you going to be this kind of example? Where you're hooked on tobacco, <laughs> spitting in a bottle? Yeah. Really? Do you not love your kids? Do you love your kids that little? And you love yourself that much? Mm. That's it. So, God was dealing with me not only to yeah, lay, lay it down for, for salvation's sake, but He was also dealing with me because you don't love your kids if you won't lay down that chew. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much you have to suffer, Jacob. You have to be a good example. Yeah. You know, Because I've seen a bad example. So, God was reminding me of my childhood mm -hmm. and how people in my life were too selfish mm -hmm. to put the kids first. So I wasn't protected. I had a bad example. There was alcohol in the house and sin in the house and evil spirits in the house. I seen demons. I had, I had the same recurring nightmare for years about this huge demon that was chasing me to kill me. Mm -hmm. That was my childhood. I, I lived I lived in, in uh, you've ever heard of uh, Fre Freddy Cougar? Yeah. Yep. That had, I was living that reality where I, every time I would fall asleep, I, was, I would go right back into that dream. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified. So I never wanted to sleep. So I had learning disabilities mm -hmm. in school. I had to go to special schools because I couldn't talk. I, could, mm -hmm. I stuttered. I couldn't say anything. It would take me like two minutes to get out the first word. And all the kids would make fun of me. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob! <laughs> you know, this one kid would just torture me <laughs> because he would just, and everybody would crack up, yeah. you know? So I wouldn't talk. Right. You know, I had a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to special classes mm -hmm. in school and stuff. And this all stemmed because the, the adults in my life were too selfish to put down the alcohol to put down the cigarettes mm -hmm. and be a man. Mm -hmm. See, that's what a man is. Mm -hmm. man is somebody that says, you know what, I'm going to love my kids more than I love myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that they have 
every opportunity to make it with Jesus and go to heaven. Amen. And if they go to hell, it's going to be uh, it's it's going to be hard for them to go to hell because of all the Bible I put in them, mm -hmm. because of the holy environment that I raised them in, mm -hmm. because of all the ways I protected them from this wicked world. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be protected from the world. Yes. They're supposed to be raised in a in a nest. Mm -hmm. There's no danger in a nest mm -hmm. if if they're a good mother and father bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's my goal is. Um, and, and that's what the Lord put in my heart, is you only get one chance at this, guys. Mm -hmm. If you screwed up by not living for God and being a good example, guess what? You're going to pay. Mm -hmm. And and not only you are going to pay, your kids are going to pay, and they're going to despise you. Mm -hmm. Because you're not being the man of God that God called you to be. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, I was able to quit you while my wife was pregnant. I was going to war against my sin, crying out to God. Amen. God, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be a bad example. I don't want to be a loser. Same here. Save me, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. And I quit chew, and I gained a bunch of weight. <laughs> <laughs> but then I started working out more. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you got to just fight. Yeah. you got to fight the good fight of faith. That's it, Lord. And lay hold on eternal life and yeah. be a real man of God. That's uh -huh. it. And fulfill your calling mm -hmm. as a man. Amen. So on your packet there, it says, So what is God looking for in a father and husband? Listen to this. Every man is called to be the priest, the prophet, and the king of his family. I want to say that again. Every man is called by God to be priest, prophet, and king to his family. And let me explain that. As priest of our family, we're called to intercede for them. When I wake up in the morning, I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for my church. Amen? Amen. Uh, the second thing is prophet. What does a prophet do? The prophet brings the word of God to the family. The prophet brings the word, right? Amen. They also are a watchman on the wall. That's all, also a job of a prophet, is to be a watchman. When, when they would put a watchman on the wall, um, if, if somebody was coming, they would say, Enemy coming! Enemy coming! Mm -hmm. See? That's the job of a prophet. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Amen. And king of his family. You have to rule your family according to the word of God. Rule. We don't like that. We we like different we don't like the King James words anymore. <laughs> because of the feminine influence. Mm. But this is not a barbaric thing. This is not a uh, dictatorship thing to where you're some kind of crazy what they try to make it out to be. Like you're some kind of crazy maniac and you're abusive because you rule your family. Mm -hmm. That's from Satan. Yes. That is witchcraft. Demonic, bro. Coming against the order of God. Yeah. Right. So we have to reject that and, and stand on these scriptures that say that men have to rule their own household. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Uh, God is looking for a man. Ezekiel 22, 30. It says, And I sought for a man among them. That should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. So this is how important it is for men of God to intercede for their families, for their churches, and for their cities, mm -hmm. and even for their countries. Yes. See, we're Brother John and I uh, in our in our corporate prayer meetings and and in our private prayer we're interceding we're standing in the gap and asking for mercy and more time and God hears that because that's the job of a priest Amen. intercession yes thank you Lord and you have to go back to the Bible to find that you know it's everywhere in the Bible Samuel said if I didn't pray for you talking about Israel his country he said if I didn't pray for you it would be sin unto me so the job of the prophet the job of the priest 
is to intercede for the people and for the land so that God doesn't send fire and brimstone down on those wicked people. Mm -hmm. And so that hopefully, uh, hopefully God will let up His wrath and convict the people of their sins. It's a blessing when God convicts. Yeah. He doesn't convict everybody. Mm -hmm. Some people he, he lets them go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we want to pray for that. All right. As Christian men, we're called to be patriarchs. Oh, the devil hates this. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the devil hates That's this right. whole this whole topic. Because <laughs> he wants oh, you to be yeah. a girly... He wants you to tuck your tail between your legs and be a, a girly little man. Mm -hmm. Yep. But God says you're a patriarch. 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 Amen. Amen. Listen to this. As Christian men were called to be patriarchs, define patriarch, the father and ruler of a family. One who governs by paternal right. Mm. Chief. You're called to be chiefs. You're called to be leaders in your life. I don't care if you don't have a biological family. You're called to be leaders. You're called Amen. to be chiefs. You're yeah. men. Amen. Amen. You're a man. You're, you're, you're in the manhood. You're in the brotherhood. Hallelujah. Yes. Of real men. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. As a man, you need to learn the attributes of a father. We learn this from the character of our Heavenly Father. So, a good father will be the image of the Heavenly Father, right? Or the, or the likeness mm -hmm. of the Heavenly Father. It says this. It says, let's look at some attributes of the Father. Leader, provider, teacher, protector, helper, friend, and encourager. Let's look at uh, the definitions. Leader, okay, this is a scripture about God being a leader. Psalm 70. 8.72 It says, So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart. He guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Mm -hmm. So that's God guiding you mm -hmm. by the skillfulness of his hands. Mm -hmm. Amen. Define leader. One that leads or conducts a guide, a conductor, a chief, a commander, a captain, one who goes first. That's what a leader is. You're out first. You know, I remember when I first got saved, I just wanted to find a good pastor to be under, you know, because I, I couldn't find any real men of God. And I got born again by the incorruptible seed. <laughs> so God told me that you got to be holy. He told me you got to obey me in all things. So... I was looking for a man of God that believed that, and I couldn't find one. And uh, I remember crying out, you know, praying to God for a leader, and I'm telling you, he pointed right back to me, and he said, you're going to have to be it. You know, you're the man. Mm -hmm. You're the leader. Um, because, sadly, they're scarce. Real men of God that stand flat-footed on holiness... They're like an endangered species. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Am I telling the truth? Yeah, brother. Amen. That's right. Amen. Go ahead. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Number two. But God's changing that. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. God's changing Amen. that. He's raising up an army. Amen. Provider. This is the number two. The first attribute was leader. Second one. This isn't in any particular order, by the way. Number two, provider, Matthew 6, 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. See, we're imitating our Heavenly Father. He knows what His kids need before they even ask Him. Yes. He's watching your life all the time. He sees everything. He loves you. Amen. He's watching over you to help you and to make sure you succeed, because that's what good fathers do. Amen. And you're fully engaged in that as a good son. Mm -hmm. You're fully engaged. You're fully attentive to your father's ears because you want to please him. Amen. Like a good son. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father, please lead me today. Father, I want to 
be a good witness today, Lord. Help me be a good witness. Help me not to be, you know, Amen. all that. Amen. So divine, yes. uh, divine provider. What does provider mean? One who provides. <laughs> furnishes or supplies. One who furnishes or supplies. One that procures what is wanted. Amen. The next one, number three. So number one was a leader. Number two was provider. Number three is teacher. As a man, as a father, you're called to be a teacher. Well, let's see what God says. Proverbs 4, 1 through 5. Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and intend to know understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. You're a teacher. Men have to be teachers. Leaders have to be teachers. The Bible says you have to be apt to teach or able to teach. That's the way the uh, modern language says it. But So the way that I love my people is by laboring so I can teach them. You see, I love my brethren and I show it through teaching. You know, I spend a lot of time laboring in the Word of God and doctrine so that I can make you into the best, which is the Lord, it's the Word of God Amen. that's making you. Amen. But so that I can give you the best knowledge so that you can be successful and bear as much fruit as you can as a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's how, you, that's what good fathers do to the people that they love is they teach them. They instruct them. If you don't love your kids, you're, you ain't going to teach them. Yeah, yeah go, go do whatever you want, Johnny. Right, right, right. No. Don't you have a desire to want to be loved and, and taught? Yes. You know that if your father's teaching you, it's because he cares about you. Hallelujah. So I want my dad to teach me. Yeah. And he does. Amen. My heavenly Amen. Father. Hallelujah. And he teaches me through my brothers. Amen. Amen. You guys teach me. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Praise God. And it's my Father's voice speaking through you. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. That's it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So this includes discipling. So teaching includes discipling. We have to disciple our kids. We have to disciple each other. Wash each other's feet. Amen. Amen. I'll do that. Proverbs 23, 13 through 14. It says, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. I said both parents have to do this, but the man should be the main disciplinarian. Um, my wife, she spanks the kids when they need it. We, we use timeouts. We do spankings. But guess what? They know that when she says, Dad's going to give you a spanking, they start crying. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because they don't want the wrath of Dad. Yeah. Amen. Yep. But they know I love them. Mm -hmm. See, I always, I always spank them. And as I'm spanking them, it's like the Holy Spirit always tells me, mm -hmm. you are saving their soul from hell. Yes. By correcting them now, because they know they're doing wrong. By correcting them now, mm -hmm. you're saving their soul from hell later on. Right. Amen. So you're driving that evil out of them. Thank you, Lord. So don't spare the rod. Amen. Or yes. you do hate your child. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Don't be. They don't need a friend. They need a father. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Clap off, friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. And, that, and that's love. Mm -hmm. And I even, I'll even hold my kids after I spank them, and yeah, hold them, and, yeah. and, and love them, and, right. and uh, hug them, and say, "I love you." That's why I do this, because mm -hmm. you can't get away with evil. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get away with 
So I'm imitating That's my right. heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. so my Father right. spanks me when I do wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. He chastens me. Yeah. So I got to make sure I, I'm that image or that reflection Amen. of Him. All right. Uh, protector. A, a man is called to be a, a protector. One that the what does that mean? That, oh well, let's read the scripture first. Um, Psalms one twenty one four through eight. It says. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. See that protection? Mm -hmm. He's preserving thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forward, forth, and even forevermore. Amen. See, God can only do that if you're submitted to Him. The woman can only be protected by the man if she's submitted to Him. If somebody breaks into my house, I'm not going to hide behind my wife. <laughs> A lot of these men will nowadays. Shame on them. The Bible says in, in um, Exodus 22, 2, I believe it is, that if somebody breaks into your house and you have to shed blood and they lose their life, that the blood is not on your hands. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody's breaking into my house, I'm going to protect my family. Yes. It is wicked not to protect your family. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. God is protector. God teaches us as men to be strong, to protect. I think of uh, David and Ziklag. Remember that? When they uh, came and he was in Ziklag and, and he went to war out with the Philistines. And when he came back, I think it was the, the Amalekites. The Amalekites had came in and took all their wives and, and kids and, and, and all their goods and uh, pillaged them to, and spoiled them. And, and they wanted to stone David. They wanted to kill David. Remember that? Yeah. And uh, what happened? Uh, David said, Lord, he, he always inquired of the Lord. See, and that's why you got to be close to God. Mm -hmm. So when you call upon him, he answers you. Amen. Mm -hmm. He inquired of the Lord. Lord, should we go and, and retrieve? Should we go and get our wives and children? And he said, yes, you will recover all. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He went and he slayed them and he protected his family. Mm -hmm. he, he got them back. And not one of them was lost, the Bible Praise says. God. Praise God. So, as men, we are not only spiritual protectors, but we are physical protectors. And uh, so I'm not promoting violence by any means. Right. I, I, don't, I don't want anybody to break into my house. But yeah. I do have a gun. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And I, I think it's a godly thing to shoot somebody down that's coming in to hurt your children. Yeah. Or, or your wife, or even yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, if if it if it runs across my mind, I'll try to I'll try to shoot at the leg or something. But I can tell you, I'm probably going to shoot to kill. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're in my house, and I don't know if you have a gun, and it's probably right. going to be dark. So that's when thieves come in at, at night. Mm -hmm. right. You know. Right. So, anyways, there's scripture on that, and. Uh, so, so that doesn't apply to turn the other cheek. Amen. Right, that, that's yeah. not the context. This is the context of you're the man. Your your wife needs to feel protected. Mm -hmm. My wife's like feels safe. Mm -hmm. You know, she doesn't worry about money because it's my job to worry about money. Right. She's not even conscious of the bills because I pay all the bills and I give her a good amount so that she can go to the grocery store and and buy what she needs. So she has a budget. And I give her money twice a month, and she has to budget that money. And if she wants extra money, she has to come and talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. So she's not worried about money at all. And I, I would have it that way. I don't include her in all the financial stuff because it's that, that's none of her business. It's my business to provide. It's my business to protect. Mm -hmm. See? So that she's focused on what? On her calling. Mm -hmm. My calling is to provide. Her calling is to raise the kids and to feed them and 
feed them spiritually and physically. That's her calling in life because we have children. Is to raise up godly seed. Yes. Now I'm overseeing that as the man. And I'm, I'm uh, primarily responsible that the Word of God is being taught to the kids. Mm -hmm. But she's my helper. Oh, yeah. She's the keeper of the home. She's, she's the one that is the teacher of, of babes, you know. The Bible says that the older woman, women should teach the younger women to be holy and the children. Yeah. So that's why mothers have all these gifts. Right. And my wife has an awesome teaching gift. But God has given that to her because she's obedient. Mm -hmm. She's obedient to the calling of raising righteous people mm -hmm. and discipling children. We're supposed to disciple our children. Mm -hmm. So we read the Bible to our kids at least three times a day, at least. And, and all of our books, we have a ton of books, and they're all Bible books. And if you want to know where I get those, you can email me at DaytonStreetPreachers.com at gmail.com. <laughs> so I want all kids to have those kind of books. Amen? Amen. All right. So, protector. Protect your family. Protect your people. Uh, what does it mean? Define protector. One that defends or shields from injury, evil, or oppression. So you, you defend or shield from injury, evil, or, or oppression. So that's spiritual and physical, isn't it? Yes. A defender. You're a defender. A guardian. The king or sovereign is or ought to be the protector of the nation. The husband is the protector of his wife and of his children. And then I put, this is why children have to be in subjection to their parents so they can protect them. I would never send my kid to a public school in a million years. Amen. Man. Because Amen. You, because now you've lost protection over them. Now you've turned them over. You're throwing them to the wolves. Mm -hmm. Now these people are going to teach them to feel bad if they disagree with transgenderism or homosexuality. Mm -hmm. They're going to teach them their wicked ways. Mm -hmm. So why would you... I don't care how good of a Christian parent you are, they're going to be influenced by their peers more than you. Sadly, I mean, I'm talking about if you send them to public school, the devil's just going to wear on them until they give in. Right. So they might last a few years. I lasted to fifth grade, and that was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Most people don't last that long. Mm -hmm. I was faithful. All my friends in church fell away, mm -hmm. and I was the last one that was hanging on to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then I, I died. Mm -hmm. So don't do it. Amen. Read the Bible to your kids all the time. And, and Hallelujah. Teach them to read it to themselves, too. Amen. Amen. So, uh, number five. Helper. You're a helper as a man. Psalms 54, 3-4. For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set, they have not set God before them. Selah. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Hallelujah. So God is my helper, and we are helpers imitating Him. Amen. What is a helper? One that helps, aids, or assists. An assistant, an auxiliary. Mm -hmm. Amen. So friend, John 15, 14 through 15, Jesus says, Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I call you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Alright. So of course, um, a friend doesn't stab you in the back, right? Amen. So he's like, you're, you're a friend if you do whatever I command you. You're, you're a friend if you love me, right? You're not a friend if you don't love me. Mm -hmm. All of God's commandments are loving. It's the definition of love. It's, mm -hmm. yes. it's putting everybody ahead of yeah. yourself and not sinning against them. Mm -hmm. It comes naturally if you have the Father's heart. Thank you, Lord. Define friend is one attached to another by affection or esteem. One that is of the same nation, party, or group. Can't say that you're of the same nation 
that God's from if you're not mm -hmm. uh, a friend to him. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God was a friend to Abraham. So we got to be now, as, as fathers and as men, we can't be um, enabling as a friend. See, this, this, friendship, this friendship is not uh, at the cost or at the expense of fathering them first. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people, they just try to be friends with their kids, and they're not parenting them. Right. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. God was a friend to Abraham because he was faithful. He was a loyal son. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's why he was his friend. Mm -hmm. He could come alongside and and treat him like a person and not have to chase him all the time. And, you know, because he was acting right. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So why is the devil so afraid of men of God? Amen? Amen. Why, why is it such a big deal? Why is all hell coming at us? Why, why do they want to get rid of the sexes? Why do they want transgenderism? Why This is an tactic of the devil. Mm -hmm. This is an attack of the devil on human society. Mm -hmm. Why does the devil want this? That's what we're going to be talking about. Joshua 23.10 One man of you shall chase a thousand. Mm -hmm. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he hath promised you. So, do you know why? Because one man chases a thousand. Because the Lord your God, He is, it's Him that's fighting for you as He has promised you. So that's why you're such a big threat. If you would just obey God extremely, if you would be yeah. an extremist, <laughs> you would put 10,000 to flight. Yes, you would, thank you, Lord. God's going to use you in a larger footprint to make you a battle axe Amen. Amen. in the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to shake the heavens and the earth. Thank you, Lord. With you, Amen. little old you, yeah, yeah. if you stay submitted and dependent on Him, Amen. That's right. Amen. Which means you got to be disciplined, Amen. Yes. All right. That's why the devil's so afraid of men of God. Amen. Revelation twelve four. Listen to this. In his tail, the devil drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Well, we know that this is talking about the man-child Christ. But from this verse, we see that Satan's number one fear is that a godly man would rule. Amen. That's his number one fear, is that a godly man, a man, well, Jesus Christ himself, but now he's worried about men that have Jesus in them ruling. Man. Men that are in subjection to Jesus, right. where Jesus can live through them, just as if they were Jesus himself. That's the impact God wants to make through you if you don't limit yourself. See? God has to try to get us to expand our minds through the Word of God and quit putting limits on God on what He can do with you mm -hmm. in your life. And say, God, I'm going to sacrifice my life. I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I'm going to sacrifice my life, and I'm going to go all the way. Whatever you want to do with me is what I'm going to do. You got to, That's what he's afraid of. You're living like Jesus then, if you do that. Right? Yes. You don't, you've given up your reputation, you've given up your life, you're radical for Christ. That's right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God gave men of God dominion over all things. Psalms 8, 5. Listen to this. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Amen. This privilege is for those living for the will of God. Living like the book of Acts. Regular corporate prayer meetings. Regular fastings. True love and devotion to God and between the brethren. And then I put, you need a brotherhood. Thank you, Lord. So God doesn't want you to just do this by yourself. Mm -hmm. And look, these things, I don't, I don't um, dread these things. I don't dread fasting, even though I don't like fasting. I like, I like food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. likes food here, right? right. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But I know that God honors fasting. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's one of our weapons mm -hmm. is fasting. Mm -hmm. yes. And when you fast, 
pray and, yeah. and seek the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, so regular corporate prayer meetings. That's just, for, for our church, that's just me and John. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You're not going to have a big group of people if you live like Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sadly. Hopefully that will change. Yeah. But uh, Brother John and I, we are dedicated because we know that all of our all of our life, our spiritual life, depends on prayer and fasting. So Brother John and I purposely um, meet together on Tuesday mornings because that's when it works for our schedule, and we pray together. We make up lists, strategy, battle plans, and we lift these petitions up to God and say, "God, please hear our prayer." And God answers. See? That's our secret. You want to know the secret? <laughs> Discipline. Discipline. Guess what? The devil tries to tear us away from that prayer meeting. Because the prayer meeting is the, the, uh, the, the jet fuel of what makes everything work. Amen. <sighs> Ask, seek, and knock in everything that you do in your life. Mm -hmm. That's how things get done in the kingdom of God. No prayer meeting, no power. That's right. No fasting, no power. You know, the way that we fast is we'll eat dinner and not eat dinner till the next night. That's a 24-hour fast. We do that once a week normally. God honors that. Mm -hmm. He honors that every week. He sends us out in the anointing, doesn't yeah, he? Right. Yes, yes. And He empowers us to live holy in the meantime when we're not out on the streets. We and know. we're seeking the Lord and the Word. So he does a million things. And, and so that's where the anointing comes from. A life submitted to him, mm. a, a life of prayer, a life of fasting, a life of consecration. Yes. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now you know the secret. So it's not a secret. Amen. Amen. God wants yeah. everybody to do it. Yes. If you want to make the biggest impact, you can. That's right. Hallelujah. Be the master of your life through submission to your head. Amen. Matthew, listen to this. Matthew 8, 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and another man come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. That's it. I said, If you're not submitted to your superiors, then your people will not be submitted to you. You teach submission through example. We are called to be under the rule and order of God. For God is the head of Christ, and Christ is the head of man, and man is the head of woman, and woman has her foot on the serpent's head. Anything not submitted to God's order is witchcraft. Listen to that, people. We have a lot of witchcraft in the church. Oh, yeah. Listen to what God calls witchcraft. 1 Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath re also rejected thee from being king. See, the king was, was in rebellion against God's order. He wasn't submitting to God's order. So he was in witchcraft. That's the sin of witchcraft. When someone rebels against the order of God, that is witchcraft. Rebelling against God Himself. Leviticus 20 verse 9 says, For everyone that curseth his father or mother shall be surely put to death. He hath cursed his father or mother. His blood shall be upon him. So that's how serious God is. Not, not, that's Old Testament. We don't do that now. Killer, you know. But why does he say that? Why did I put that in there? Because that's witchcraft. That's uh, coming against God's order. That's yeah. rebellion. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's right. It's rebellion against God's order. God's kingdom is a theocracy. It's a uh, hierarchy. There's a hierarchy to the kingdom of God. There's a hierarchy to the priesthood. Did you know that? That Christ is the, the head priest? Amen. And there's a priesthood? And that we're under the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood of, of Melchizedek. I know. So there's an order to things. There's a, so there is spiritual authority set up by the Holy Ghost, and this authority is set up to bless you and protect you. Amen. 
But Americans refuse to submit to spiritual authority. Hmm. They refuse to because they look at it as something like Old Testament or something. You know, like, oh, that's under the law. So, so they're actually participating in witchcraft mm -hmm. if it's if it's the people that God set up for leadership it's actually mm -hmm. witchcraft if God told you to be under uh, spiritual leadership God expects you to submit to that spiritual leadership until he releases you from that uh, place that he put you in mm -hmm. so you're filling a slot you're filling a position you're filling a place in the kingdom of God but if you leave that without God's permission, now you're out of the order of God and you're out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. And God, and it's up to God what He does with you. Mm -hmm. But we don't have, as Americans, we have such an individual mindset that everybody's just doing whatever they want. Yeah. Every, every man's a God unto himself. Mm -hmm. There's no order. There's no structure. There's no organization. But the homos... They got an army. They know how to submit to their superiors. Right. Mm -hmm. So, we have to be close enough to the Lord to understand uh, who God has put in leadership and, and who God expects us to be under leadership for, from. That's it. You have to pray and ask God, God, where do you want me? What, what pastor do you want me to be under? You know, to sit under and learn from. Because you're supposed to be being discipled, Right? That's your job, right, as disciples, is, is to be discipled and to be a man under authority. Amen? So you have to make sure that, that you are asking God, God, where do you want me? Where, where do you want me in the body of Christ? Where's, where's my job? Because you have a job to do. You have a work to be done. Amen? All right, let's move on. So men are called to rule in the family and in the church. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you all know that? Yes. Men yes. are called to rule in the family and in the church. So what if what is a qualification for men of God? First Timothy chapter three tells us. Let's read it on your packet. It says, This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good thing. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, and apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetousness, not a covetous. One that ruleth his own house well. That's a qualification for leadership. One that ruleth his own house well. Hallelujah. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. That's why they need a healthy fear of dad and mom. Amen? But, but especially of dad. You've got to be able to rule your own house well and have your children in subjection. That starts when, you're, when they're young. You don't wait till they get old and then start correcting them. Come on. It's a hundred times harder then. Once they start realizing that they're doing wrong, that's when you correct them. It's about one years old. You start giving them smacks on the hands, mm -hmm. telling them no. And, uh, you know, and as they get older and as they know more, the, the discipline changes, you know. But you start training a child in the way they should go as soon as they have the cognitive understanding. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Verse 5, For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved, that means tested, and proved faithful, right? 
Let, they, let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. If you're a man of God, you're blameless. Amen. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. That's what a woman of God is. Faithful in all things. That's the Bible right there, Anna. Amen. Number 12. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto you, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So these people were in the house of God. They were in the brotherhood. Amen. They were faithful to the house of God. When it was time for church, they were there. You didn't have to drag them in with a chain. They wanted to be there. They loved it. They loved church. Yeah. And they know that God expects them to be there and be there on time. Mm -hmm. And not look like a bomb. I mean, it looked like they actually care. Look like they're actually professional. Look like they actually are going before a king to minister to him mm -hmm. and to the church. So, if you want to be a man of God, study these qualifications. Because mm -hmm. this is what it takes. Because if you're a hypocrite, your ministry is going to fail. Amen. Your family's going to fail. Yeah. Everything's going to fail. Amen. Hey, if your wife and children won't follow you, you can't give in. You still have to stay the standard, stay the course. And then they have a place to come back in when they're ready to submit and get right with God. Amen. But if you if you let down the walls and, and you compromise and, and you get defiled, now you just sabotaged everybody. Now everybody... Now they have nowhere to come back to because you've done polluted all the water up. See? That's why no matter what they do, you have to lead and you have to be faithful no matter what. No matter what your wife and children do. Amen. In the future. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, glory to God. So, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to start speeding through here a little bit faster. Ephesians 5, 22 through 33 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. The wife has to be submitted to the husband in everything, the Bible says. Amen. Do you see that today? No. Very rarely, huh? No. But the people that have this are people that have done the next part. Let's keep reading. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. See? We gave, her, gave herself for her, for the church, for our wives. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Okay. That's what people don't want to do. They don't want to take the time. They're too busy. They're too tired. You know, they're tired after work. They don't want to spend the time with the wife. Hey, drink a bye. <laughs> drink a cup of coffee. Whatever you got to do, yeah. get in the Bible with your wife. That's the best thing I ever did in my life. Amen. Was I loved my wife enough to discipline myself, even when I didn't feel like it. Even when I was tired, and it was I, I didn't want to do it. For the first year... I think every night, I mean, I'm sure there's probably things that came up, but every night for the first year, every day, I was reading the Bible with my wife. Because we said, at the beginning, I said, sweetheart, wouldn't you want to have a, a, a life where, you know, we're both in the Bible all the time? Like, wouldn't God bless that kind of life? And she was all on board. I got super blessed. And she said, I want to get off Facebook with you because it's not good for our, our spiritual life. Wow. It's not good for our marriage. 
And I, I suggested that as well, as the leader, to get off all that social media garbage, because it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible for a relationship. That's right. Because, ah, I'm not even going into that. <laughs> but just figure it out. And I, that's mad. Amen. But she wanted to read the Word of God all the time. And that's what kind of... See, you want to get with a woman and that, that will do that in the engagement. If, they, if she won't do it in the engagement, she ain't going to do it in the marriage. Right. No. So we started, when I first met her, I was already on fire for God. I didn't have to get on fire for God, because I was already on fire for God. Right. And I was reading the Bible. We, Our whole life was about the Bible. She would go to all the Bible studies with me before we had kids. Yeah. And even after we had two kids, we were still going to Bible studies all the time. Mm -hmm. And we were always reading the Bible together. See, mm -hmm. You're, you have to make your whole life about the Bible if you want to have this type of family yes. and this type of life. Because she has to see... In the Word of God, that this is my calling from God to submit to my husband and to raise my children in righteousness. And she has to see her role, her commission given by God in the Scriptures. It can't just be coming from you. She has to see that, okay, it's God's command for me to submit to my husband. Mm -hmm. And she has to make it her own faith. Otherwise, she'll never submit to you as a man. If she doesn't see that it's God's calling yes. on her life Amen. to be your helper. Amen. She's not her own. In American marriages, we have two separate people. They have two jobs, Amen. two different lives, two everything. No, that's not the design of God. No. The design of God is that she would be helping the man fulfill his mission, which is their mission. Amen. Fulfilling the will of God. But we have her going off and having her own career and her own thing, and it's not good for the marriage. I'm not not saying women can't work outside the house, but I'm saying you got to be careful with that because now she's got this other agenda. But my wife, she's all about my business. She's one with me. Right. So we're one in everything we do. We're one. We're a team. We're a partner in everything. Amen. And she fulfills her role. I have the best wife in the world. Hallelujah. But it's because, just like me, God did it through the Word. Amen. We're not good on our own, right? We're good because of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Apart from Him, we're wicked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, okay. <clears throat> All right. Let, uh, let's go to verse 32. I'm going to skip a little bit there. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. She's got to respect you as the head, and you got to love her. I don't, how, how would it look if I was in a nice suit on Sunday morning and she comes out in rags? No, I make sure I give her... I like giving her money so that she buys nice clothes that she can glorify God in. Right. You know, I don't want me look like a million bucks and her looking like a bum. <laughs> what kind of husband am I? She's the glory of man. She's the glory of my ministry. My number one. Amen. So I got to make sure that she is taken care of and loved. Hallelujah. And cherished. Yes. So. Amen. Hallelujah. So when, when subduing everything in your life under Christ, start with yourself. Have self-control over your own body and life. Amen. Have self-control over your own body and life. Is anything not subdued under Christ in your life? Ask yourself, is there anything not subdued under Christ in your life? The fruit of the Spirit is self-control, so God is expecting you to be the example first. How can we be leaders of our lives if we ourselves are out of order? 2 Samuel 23.3 says, The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of, the fear of God. So in other words, um, in order to have everything subdued, counting your body, you have to rule in the fear of God. That was my point on that. Amen. So, submit yourselves to authority and expect others to do the same. 
Hebrews 13, 17. Listen to this. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. We do not take this verse serious in the American church. People that God has put uh, to lead you, the Bible says submit to them. It says obey them. It's witchcraft not to. Like I said, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Amen. Yes. So I expect those around me, I expect those around me to be submitted as I am submitted. Don't, ain't we, Brother John? Amen. We expect each other to be submitted. Amen. We expect each other to be where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be there and, and, and be in order. Amen? Amen. We expect it. I expect it out of myself. And so I expect it out of everybody else. So you have to teach people how to treat you as well as a man of God. You can't let people walk on you and disrespect you. But at the same time, you've got to be respectable. You can't be a slob and be showing up late and, and uh, you know, no. you got to be respectable. you got to teach people that you're respectable and you're worthy of respect. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Give and demand respect from the people in your life. How can people respect you if you don't respect yourself? Amen. So most of the time, the same people that have hard time submitting to authority end up having wives that will not submit to them. Not all the time, but this is the pattern I've seen. Remember, monkey see, monkey do. People listen to what you do more than what you say. So always teach your men and women to submit to authority through your example, not only your words. Submit to spiritual authority, which is the church, always following the rules, and governmental authority, paying taxes and obeying laws. Amen? Hey, when I first got saved, God chastened me because I wouldn't wear my seatbelt. <laughs> God wants us to follow all the laws of the land. I was used to rebelling all the time. That's how I was raised. Amen? So God had a a uh, cop sitting right up the street from my house. Never happens. But it was the Lord. Because he told me to put on my... I, I was like... I felt convicted to put on my seatbelt. I was like, I'm just going down the street. You know? I'm just going like a block from my house to the ice cream shop because my wife is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what what bad can happen driving a block? You know? Uh, and I'm yeah. telling you, God had that cop sitting right there by the ice cream shop. <laughs> and he pulled me over for not having a seatbelt. Uh. He, well, he found another another reason to pull me over, but it, he gave me a seatbelt ticket. Mm. So that was the Lord's love. Saying, yeah. son, if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be an example, you got to follow the rules. Amen. There's no exception for us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God for that good father. Amen. 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 Subdue your bodies. Romans 6.12 let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Mm -hmm. And your members, which is your body parts, as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. I put fast and pray and seek the Lord until you have victory and then fight to keep it. Hallelujah. Fight to keep victory in your life. Hallelujah. The biggest battle is getting the victory. That's the hardest battle. But then you have to fight to keep it as well. Mm. Talk about victory over sin, lust. Yes. Amen. So that was subdue your bodies. This is subdue your spirit. Proverbs 25, 28 says this. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. And then I put, discipline yourself. Get the mind of Christ. Get an eagle eye view so you can be above your circumstances. Uh -huh. You know why I don't freak out and lose my mind when something happens? Mm -hmm. It's because I'm thinking eternally. Uh -huh. I'm thinking, well, God knows What's going on? Yeah. God's in charge. This yeah. isn't hidden from the eyes of God. Amen. So I'm not going to freak out. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Right. As the man, you can't freak out when your wife freaks out. Right. <laughs> She's a weaker vessel. Don't go along with it. That's right. You're the one that has to be stable. Right? You, you have to it. be the you have to be the, the reason. Uh, you know, you have to be the the logic behind it. Uh, and my wife's gotten really good at feeling my uh, peace even when things are bad and, and and saying you know she looks at me and she and peace comes upon her you know and I say look we have a God you know we're not like the heathen that don't have a God right, right. we can pray right. we can trust the Lord and we're we're all we are eternally secure because we're going to abide in Jesus. Right, right. So I'm not afraid of anything that would get me shaken to where I'm losing my mind. You know. So uh, remember that it's your job to stay calm. It's your job to be the the calm and collective one of the family, and be it's your job to ground the family. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as men, all of us have to answer this call to manhood. Being a real man is the challenge of a lifetime. But a challenge we must learn and conquer. Remember, the number one purpose of the devil and witchcraft is to take out the heads, which are the men. Mm -hmm. To debilitate and emasculate the men so they cannot perform their role in society. That's the number one job of the devil. Right. Number one job of witchcraft is to debilitate, to stop the men yes. from being men. Hmm. To make them like women. Right. Satan wants to feminize the men so they aren't the mighty men that God called them to be. Let me say that again. Satan wants to feminize the men so that they aren't the mighty men that God called them to be. This is the Antichrist spirit in the church causing these men to be like the world and wear these tight, legging jeans. They look like pansies. They are not respected. They're not manly men. They're feminine. Amen? And that's the spirit of this age. That's what right. that's what wicked people want. This is a wicked church. It's not the real church. Amen? Amen. It's a fake. First Samuel 15, 23 says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. <clears throat> Define rebellion and open and avowed renunciation of the authority. See that? An open and avowed renunciation of the authority of the government to which one owes allegiance. That government can be a family, it can be a church, it can be a principal at a school. Any head, when you come against that, you're a rebel, you're partaking in witchcraft, you're partaking in the rebellion against God's order. Amen? You guys, Amen. you guys liking this teaching? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the number number two Amen. definition was open resistance to lawful authority. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's what rebellion is: open resistance to lawful authority. Amen. And then, after that, it says, "If you are on God's green earth, you owe allegiance to the order He set up, which includes men at the head of the house and of the church." And that's why Satan is determined to get all the men in sin so that they will not be effective in their jobs as men. If Satan can get the men to lay down and not do their job, he can destroy the families, which will in turn destroy the society. That's why there's a full-out war in society against men and fathers, constantly mocking and belittling them. And also notice the war on gender itself. That's because the devil knows if he can destroy the order, he can destroy the family, the church, and the country. But now God is raising up honorable men, Amen. mighty men, that will take their calling of as a man serious. A new generation of real manly men 
who are going to get back in the driver's seat and lead their churches and families the way the Bible commands them to. The real church is a brotherhood of men that have laid down their lives for their families and for each other. Um, number God, God being number one. A brotherhood that loves deep, a brotherhood that loves deep and gives everything to see everyone live to their fullest potential in God, accomplishing God's mission. This brotherhood is a safe place to grow and learn together as men. We go to war together, but we also learn to do life together. We go to war on the streets together. Amen. Amen. But we also learn to do life together. How to be good men to our wives and children. We learn to communicate and be successful the way God wants. The church is supposed to be geared to disciple men. And those men are supposed to be leading and discipling their wives. We see this in the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 14.35 says this, And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is, shame, it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So men are called to lead their families and the church. And this is not sexist. This is loving. Yes. Let me tell you that everyone is looking for real men, including God. Yes. This world is screaming out for a man that will lead them. Amen? Amen. Amen. we got to give it to them. Amen. we, we got to be those men. We can't look at for somebody else to lead. Mm. Who's going to be the leader? Mm. God's saying we will. Amen? Amen. We have, you guys have to. I have to. Amen? We have to be that person that nobody, they're, they're not taking the calling to manhood. They're, they're not fulfilling the calling to manhood. So we have to be those ones. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Satan's biggest war against humanity is against the men. If he can take out the leaders and silence them, then he can take out the families and the churches. God wants manly men, hard workers. He likes good fathers and good husbands that lead their people with integrity, loyalty, and true love. I'll say that last one again. He likes good fathers and good husbands that lead their people with integrity, loyalty, and true love. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to exhort you to be men. Amen. 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 Yes. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, and quit you like men. That means act like men. Be strong. Amen. 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 That's what. That's what. That's how Paul ended his letter to the Corinthians. Mm. Act like men. Be strong. Amen. Because it takes that. It takes a strong man that's right. to be a man. Amen. Hallelujah. Zechariah ten five through nine. And they shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight, because the Lord is with them. And the riders on horses shall be confounded. Amen. Joshua 1, 5-9, last verse. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and have a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. 
Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's from the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Father. Whenever I'm in, whenever I get feel that fear before I'm about to go out into a battle, I think of this verse. I hear my Father's Amen. voice. This is God's voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Saying, be strong and very courageous, for I am with you, and I will fight for you. Amen. That's what God's telling us. So, that's not only on the streets and street preaching, that's every day when I have to, even the little stuff, see? you got to have that same heart in the little stuff. When you have to bring something up to somebody in your life and talk about <coughs> stuff, it takes courage. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to risk things. You have to be willing to risk people rejecting you even. Yes. In order to obey God. Yeah. So, this is hard. You know, when uh, the thing that just popped into my mind, and we're closing now, it's 11.50, we're at the lunch. But the thing that popped into my mind was having to confront my wife on things. You know, on, on things that I know that she's going to disagree with. But I wait till the kids go to bed, and, and uh, we always have Bible reading. Not every night, but we have it weekly, normally. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and that's, after we read the Bible, that's when we talk about strategies for serving God, and we talk about problems, we talk about the kids, talk about family, whatever we need to talk about to strategize our strategy for the Lord to live for Him. So that's when I have to bring stuff up to my wife that I don't want to bring up because I know she's going to disagree and it's probably going to it's it's going to be a hard time, you know. But that's what makes the man is that he can do that and that he will do that because he loves her and the family more than he loves her feelings even, you know. So it's not all about making your wife happy. It's about making God happy. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And of course I want my wife to be happy. I've laid down my life for her. And she knows it. Mm -hmm. So because, she's tr because she trusts me, even when she don't understand things, because she's a woman of God, she obeys my leadership. So, and then God always reveals it to her. That this was me leading your husband the way that I'm supposed to. So mm -hmm. just remember that. That God... If, if, if God is giving you leaders, God is leading you through those people. That's God using His system, using His order to lead you. Mm -hmm. Just like how you're going to be used to lead your people. Amen? Amen. So how can you expect God to uh, have people submit to you when you won't even submit to people in your life that you're supposed to submit to? That's hypocrisy. Yes. Amen? Amen. So that's why God is, is good to me because I'm, I'm fine submitting to everything and everyone He wants me to submit to. Amen. And the Bible says, Give respect to those whom respect is due. Give honor to those whom honor is due. Mm -hmm. And it says, Pay your taxes too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, close in prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank You. For this wonderful teaching, Lord, I pray, I pray that this uh, word from heaven would not go on deaf ears, Lord. That it would, that this word would change our lives, Lord. That we would be the masters of our life because we're submitting to you, Lord. And you would subdue the earth under us, Lord, for your name's sake, Lord, because all things are, will be submitted and subdued under your Son's feet, Amen. As the Scriptures say, Lord. So help us to be part of that. That uh, creation plan, Lord, help us to be part of that that order of your universe, yes, of your Lord. kingdom, Lord. And we pray that you would bless these men and give them wisdom and, and understanding and knowledge and counsel and the fear of the Lord and, and might and, and righteous judgment, Lord. Give them everything they need in the spirit and teach them to be fully dependent on you yes, so that they can truly give up their lives for you and for their wives and future wives and children. And, and if, they, if, if they live like Paul, Lord, that's even more glory to you. 
if they don't have families. But I just pray that they would be a, a force for good, Lord, Amen. for your kingdom. And that includes me, Lord. I pray that I would continue to, to be the man you called me to be. Yes. And I pray that you would bless all the hearers that hear this message, that they would see uh, this word of your order, this, this word from heaven. <clears throat> Lord, to bless your people. Lord, this is a blessing if we can get a hold of this. Yes, Lord. And it will bless the whole kingdom of God. So I just pray that you would, Lord, that you would supernaturally help people to understand this message and, and this word, that it would not be uh, twisted by the devil. Yes, Lord. We praise you and thank you. Thank you In Jesus', Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Father. All right. How's it, sound, how's it sound if uh, next message is at 1 o'clock? So we'll have about an hour and yeah, a little bit over an hour to decompress and uh, have some, some lunch and yes. answer, a lot of info. answer emails. Uh, yeah, we got to digest that a little bit. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll, eat, we'll eat here pretty soon, like eat at 1230 or if somebody wants a snack, go for it. That's pretty good. Great word.